by the derivative of the following functions. Ah. Uh, first off, I don't know why I read the directions. They're the same. Secondly, now notice that in part C we have a product rule, and then within that product rule we have a function inside of a function. So you've got a chain rule in my product rule. Not as good as peanut butter and chocolate, but we'll make do. So let's start the product rule first. So this would be first. This would be second. So according to the product rule, h prime of x, would be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. If you want to put primes, we can. In fact, I will just do that. So it's the first 8x cubed times the derivative of the second, just putting a prime on it. The quantity 4x minus 8 squared plus the second. times the derivative of the first. Prime. I said prime. OK. Anything with the prime on it gets cleaned up. Or anything else, leave it alone. So we're going to have 8x cubed times, here comes the chain rule. What happens to that 2, namely this one right here? Bring it in front. What do we do to the inside? At this point, nothing. Take one off the exponent, so there's a 1 here. Again, you don't have to write that. But are we done with the chain rule? Hex to the no. What's the multiple derivative of the inside? 4. Good. Plus the second. times the derivative of the first, this is just your straight up, don't tell me, yeah, we'll go with that, power rule, so you'll have 24x squared. Awesome. All right, cleaning this up a little bit, um, like for instance, um, this is to the first power, so we can distribute all of this stuff through. If you wanted to, what would that give us? Something really ugly. Uh, and the only reason I'm having you guys do this is because most, you know what, we'll distribute the whole thing. So if you would take a second, distribute the numerator, uh, the, I'm sorry, distribute the first term. Second term, you're going to have to foil of 4x minus 8 and then multiply by the 24x squared. All right, I got, after all is said and done, I got 640x to the fourth minus, minus 2048x cubed plus 1536x squared. So again, that's by distributing the 8x cubed, 2, and the 4 through to the 4x minus 8, foiling out this guy, and then distributing the 24x squared, and then combining a whole mess of like terms. Icky sticky. All right, that was part C. How could part D get any better? Well, first off, we're not going to simplify all the way. We're just going to only simplify the numerator. Is that a true statement? No, I think we'll just leave it alone. But there's two ways you can handle this. First way, leave it as a quotient, uh, which we'll do first. I might have to grab another sheet of paper here. So the quotient rule says this is high, this is low. So it's low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So we're going to have, I'm going to switch colors here. <laughs> we'll go black. I hope that's enough room. So we'll have low
the high. What's the derivative of high? 8x plus 1 should just be 8 minus high. Now notice the derivative of low is a composition of function, so we need the chain rule. So what happens to this 3? It comes in front. What do we do to the inside? Nothing. Take one off of the exponent 2. And what's the derivative of the inside? 2. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. That was squishy. All oh. over low squared. Squishy is a technical term. Just another pair of parentheses there. Two. All right. If you want to clean this up just slightly, we can do that. For instance, we can put that 8 in front of the first term. And then notice we have a 3 and a 2 that are on the outside, which would make 6. And then we have a 2x plus 1 squared left over, and then downstairs when you cube a square, you multiply the powers, so we'll have 2x plus 1 to the 6th. If you want to clean up the numerator even more, be my guest. I would continue seeing it, but I don't want Disney to sue me. So there's another way of doing this, and the other way of doing it is, let me add a new sheet. Oh, I hit the wrong button. All right, I know this is very boring. Um, I'll draw a cloud. That's nice. Uh, so our function, look at all this room I have. What do we have? 8x plus 1 over uh, 2x plus 1 quantity cubed. But what I'm going to show you here is that we could have written it as a product rule. Now, among the two, the product rule is a little bit easier than the quotient rule. So if you're able to rewrite a quotient as a product, I suggest you try it. So now, according to the product rule, this would be first. This would be second. So. Let's do the product rule. Again, use a prime to differentiate the derivative, which is to differentiate a function. It all makes sense. So the product rule says it's the first times the derivative of the second. Here comes the chain rule. Negative 3 comes in front. 2x plus 1. Leave it alone. Take one off. Negative 4 times the derivative of the inside, dos. Plus, remember, plus for a product rule, minus for a quotient rule. The second, bam, I said bam, times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of 8x plus 1, he asks? 8. Awesome. Leave it alone. You can clean up if you want to, but just leave it alone. And actually, as it turns out, if we go back to the previous one here, uh, notice we could have pulled out a 2x plus 1 from this term and this term, and then they would have canceled one with a denominator down there. Same deal here. We're not going to, though, because that's way too much fun. All right, so that is your chain rule. Good times.